your favorite book series of all time can be the best and worst thing because you might be left in a horrible reading slump afterwards. So in this video, we are going to be hunting for a good book. We'll be reading some of BookTok's favorite books and some new releases that just came out. What? So some people think this is her best book. I definitely don't think so. What if I don't like it? I actually thought that like maybe this wouldn't be that bad, but it is. And they started like DMing on Reddit, which like, I would never do that. When they got together, I was like, okay. You smell like you're mine. If we have two flops in a row, I'm gonna be so upset. A beard. And he's sarcastic. I had to find out what nodding was. Just wish I'd never learned what that was. Hi guys, it's been a long time since I did like a reading video and I really liked when I did my Akatar reading vlog. I feel like I loved picking up the camera and like giving updates. Basically, this video is like a little special. I've basically been in a coma for the last three months since January. I've only been reading Sarah J Mass's books. I read the entire Sarah J Mass catalog. I read all of Akatar, all of Crescent City, and yesterday I finished Throne of Glass which is my new favorite series ever. But basically, I've just been like sitting and reading Siri after Siri after Siri, and her series are so long and lengthy and you get so attached to the characters that I haven't read like a single like little standalone rom-com quick cheesy book in three months. If you look at my Goodreads, it's literally just all Sarah J Mass. Like everyone's like, girl, do you read anything else? So now I'm a free woman. I can do whatever I want in terms of books. I can read anything I want. So this video is special because you and I are going to be getting back into like the reading era together. Meaning I'm going to read some new books that are coming out or have just recently come out that I've really been wanting to read, but I didn't have obviously time or the headspace to read them in between my Sarah J Mass binges. I have some books that I really want to read. This is my first one, Butcher and Blackbird. I heard it's really good if you're in a slump. The text is pretty big. It's only like 300 pages. Obviously I'm not going to be too impressed because it's not very long and like not super in-depth but i do want to read this so this is going to be the first book of the video and then the second book of the video is going to be just for the summer abby jimenez it just came out like a couple days ago i've really been wanting to read this i ordered it from target the reason i'm not starting with that one is because it's not here yet but i heard it's like a little deeper i need that right now like i need something that's deep because i used to read so many books that were just like cheesy little rom-coms like i would get attached to the characters for like 200 pages and then it'd be over and i feel like that's not filling my soul anymore like it's not working for me it's not doing enough so that's the issue we have here i gotta find some good books before i like fully go off the deep end and just like reread everything from sarah j mass the third book we're gonna read in this video is funny story by emily henry it's coming out in like exactly a week so i'm very excited for this one i heard it's her best book i am not really like a people we meet on vacation book lovers girl i'm just strictly beach read and happy place which are my favorites i've heard people saying that this one's her best and after happy place i really really like that one so i'm like i'm now back on the kick i do low-key want to read bride i don't know if i'm gonna like it i feel like i probably won't but i think it'd be entertaining to read it if you guys don't know it's like paranormal but i feel like if i'm gonna read it i should probably do it on camera because it'd be more entertaining that way and i have had it on my kindle for a little bit so maybe i'll read that in this video let's start with the first book of the video first update on this book not much of an update but i'm 66 pages in and i'm like low-key not liking it and i don't know why i looked at goodreads and everyone gave it five stars or at least a four and i was like okay so it's probably just me i feel like maybe old me would have enjoyed this but i haven't read a rom-com book in three months the last one i read was love redesigned and i didn't like that one so that kind of makes sense i feel like i've kind of evolved into like fantasy i like the higher stakes stuff now but i kind of wanted to take a break from the high stakes because i wanted to like just chill and have like a brainless read but so far i'm not obsessed but basically they meet at the beginning of the book like on page one which like Again, I'm not used to that anymore because I had to wait three books in Throne of Glass for the main people to meet. Obviously, it's a romance book. I know what I'm getting into, but basically they met in the first chapter. They're both serial killers and they're both like infamous. So they say they should make a competition to see like whoever kills the person first wins. I guess it justifies it, but they're not like serial killers. Well, they are. They're serial killers that kill bad guys. They're the ones who are like killing the bad people which like is still really wrong but i'm turning it off you know i'm turning that part off of my brain the main guy is named rowan which rowan whitethorn i love you i miss you no it's like i shouldn't have read this first because like rowan is the guy from throne of glass so i don't know what i'm gonna do about that i'm not like obsessed with either of them i do feel like he's kind of down bad so i guess it's like insta love i mean i don't mind it it's just not appealing to me right now like i tried to pick it up and i was like kind of bored i finished i don't really have anything positive to say unfortunately i really thought this would have been better but i don't know there were a lot of time jumps which i don't know if i mentioned this but a lot of time jumps as in like the book spanned over the course of four years but we didn't really see all of that it would just be like one chapter and then they would be like hanging out or whatever next chapter 
two years later I'd be like oh it can't be insta love because they've been hanging out for four years but it's like it still feels like insta love to me because I've only read two chapters of it like you know what I'm saying that was my big issue with this I just feel like it was very insta love I feel like overall the serial killer stuff I wasn't like the biggest fan of anyways we're glossing over the fact that they kill people like if you read this book you would know but like they are very much seem like normal people like her best friend is like making jokes about how she's a serial killer and I was like I don't think it's normal to want to kill people even if they're bad people like you know I think that's the show Dexter has the same concept but like still that's still weird but I don't think like I expected this to be like amazing but I definitely thought that it was gonna be a book that like surprised me like maybe the writing would be really good or like the characters would be so funny and witty like I definitely wanted them together but like I also didn't really care like when they got together I was like okay nothing in me was like oh my god like this has been so long coming like push and pull like oh my god no from literally page two he was into her which to me is insta love i just feel like overall the writing was just not for me the stuff about the killing was kind of nasty and i mean this with no judgment because i know people like this book so i'm not trying to be like super mean but when i was reading this i was like this kind of reminds me of the people that like hate on book talk and they're like what are you guys reading when i was reading this book and i was like yeah what are we reading on book talk like this is kind of like embarrassing i was like guys like i'm with you sometimes i really am but like for this one i'm like this is the epitome of like what are you guys reading because it was just like smutty serial killers which is fine i don't want to yuck your yum if you like that's fine but i was like i don't know i don't know i think at the end of the day it's hard to trust people's five star ratings sometimes because you don't know what a five star is to them versus what it is to you like reading is so subjective i personally gave this two stars which is like very low for me i usually give books like three but i gave this one a two because i was like no no, no. like i'm gonna return this to target that's how much i didn't like it i don't want to even keep it it's hard to not use other people's five stars as your like compass for like if a book is good i'm the one to trust my favorite booktubers if they say a book is five stars i'll probably read it but then you read it yourself and you're like oh i don't like it so i don't know because how do we judge books if we don't use the star rating so personally like i said i gave it two stars but i know so many people who gave it four or five stars and that doesn't mean that we have like a better judgment of books like either one of us but it's just like i didn't like it and they liked it i don't know i think for me i always trust when a book has higher ratings because like duh but at the end of the day sometimes you just might not like it either like sometimes it just might not be good for you and like you might not see what everyone else sees in it like i said like i'm probably going to say many times I'm already facing a very weird moment of my life because I just finished Torn of Glass, which is like the craziest, most complex, world-building, emotional series. Like you get attached to the characters. And now I'm going back to like these one book, 300 page romance books that have no depth. And I'm just like, kind of like caught off guard. This was a no for me, but we're going on to the next book. This is not what I had planned, but my Just for the Summer book hasn't come yet. I've been waiting for two weeks. It's still not here. So that was going to be the next book in the video, but I don't have it yet. So I'm going to be reading Bride. I'm about to go to the gym, so I feel like it'd be a good, fun little book to read on my Kindle while I walk. I also don't have high expectations for this one. I feel like after reading Butcher and Blackbird, I should probably pick something that I'm going to like more. But I also think it'll be really funny. If you guys don't know what this is about, it's like a werewolf and a vampire, I think. I don't know and it's like also Allie Hazelwood is known for writing like smutty little like stem romances like she's not a fantasy girl or a paranormal girl I think it's called the Omega verse I don't really know anything about that but she's not really known for that so I think it's not gonna be very complex like with world building and stuff it's probably gonna be very surface level I don't think I'm gonna be like obsessed with this I just think it's gonna be funny and it better be quick because I'm really behind on my Goodreads goal I think I'm like nine books behind right now so <sighs> If we have two flops in a row, I'm gonna be so upset. I hope this one surprises me because right now I'm thinking I'm probably not gonna like it and maybe it'll surprise me and I actually will like it. Like as long as it makes me kick my feet a little bit, I don't care that bad. Even if it's really, really stupid and it's like laughable. I don't know, people liked it, but people also really hated it. So I really don't know where I'm gonna fall on this one. I started at the gym yesterday. So now it's been like a full 24 hours. I think I'm exactly 50% through. It's interesting. I don't know how I feel about it. I'll just like briefly tell you guys like, what's been going on in the plot there's like a big war between the vampires and the werewolves in order to make like an alliance they have the girl misery she's like forced to marry the guy low a marriage on paper and she has to go live with the werewolves for a full year to like show that the alliance is like working i saw a quote on tiktok and it was like you smell like your mind cringe but i was like what is that about i started reading this at the very beginning when they first met he was like oh like why do you smell like that i think i figured out from all the hints that like him saying like why do you smell like that is because like she smells like his mate or something 
I don't even know what I'm saying guys like <laughs> I did know about the mates and stuff from Throne of Glass Throne of Glass and Akatar have a lot of mates and like the whole biting thing like that's in those books so I'm not like unfamiliar but definitely something and I think that's why he keeps asking her why she smells like that because like he can smell it on her I don't know there's my update I'm halfway through I think I'm gonna try to finish it today or tomorrow morning because I'm not like obsessed with it so I just want to get it over with no i i like i'm actually hating this more and more like i didn't hate it that much at the beginning but now that i'm like more than halfway and i was expecting like this crazy build up and there's literally no build up they're just already together what's really bothering me the page that i'm on right now basically like he off <laughs> he offered to let her drink from his like neck don't even ask me and she was like you can't do that it's only done by people who have deep feelings for each other and he says and you and i don't no you don't we literally don't know anything about you guys like i hate this i hate this so much ew ew it's insta love oh my god no i actually thought that like maybe this wouldn't be that bad but it is i finished bride this morning nothing nice to say once again i don't want to yuck anyone's yum if you do love it like skip past this it's not going to be very nice i feel so bad that i've been like hating everything i've been reading i like didn't expect it to be this bad i ended up giving it two stars i just did not want to read that like after the 50 percent mark i did not care there was just no build up to the relationship i feel like it had a good thing going at the beginning like with the mates and everything like you could tell there was some like ominous little like why are they into each other type of thing going on but then halfway through they were just like well i'm obsessed with you and he was like well i'm obsessed with you you and she was like oh then let's just be together and i was like have you ever read a romance book before like that's not how it's supposed to go and then for the werewolf aspect i just did not like that i had to find out what nodding was i had to google that and i just wish i never learned what that was i feel like this book was written for people who really like the werewolf stuff i'm not one of those people so but yeah like i said i gave it two stars i thought maybe it'd be a three star but at the end i just didn't really care what was going on like i literally just wanted it to be over i knew it was gonna be like a little joke i didn't think i was gonna like actually like it but i thought at least it'd be like a three star maybe a 3.5 like maybe it would surprise me but no 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 i hated that so much like i said i don't want to yuck anyone's yum because i know i just did that twice in a row but i also think partially it has to do with the fact that i just picked books that are like not normal concepts butcher and blackwood was about serial killers and then bride was about werewolves like i think i just need something normal so that brings us into my second book i'm gonna be reading no third book I just started the first two chapters, but just for the summer, it finally came in. Today is also the day that Funny Story comes out, but my book is not getting delivered for a couple days, so I might go buy one or try to find it online or something so I can read it in this vlog. I don't want to wait too long. The next book is going to be just for the summer. I just read the first two chapters, like I said, so, so far, it's kind of like very realistic to like my own life almost but basically this girl she has a curse that like anyone she dates whenever they break up the person will find their soulmate like right after her but the guy in this book also has the same thing that happens to him like whoever he dates the minute that they break up the girl will find her soulmate so she sees his reddit post about it and he's like am i the asshole whatever and she sees it and she like replies to it and she's like oh my god like it happens to me too and they started like dming on reddit which like I would never do that because there are weirdos on reddit but anyways but basically the guy all of his friends are now like married and coupled up and he's like when's it gonna be my turn like i'm the only single friend left and i was like oh why is that about me so far they've been messaging which once again i would never do that with someone from reddit like you would have to pay me no actually you couldn't even pay me i'm excited for this one i feel like i'm gonna like this one more already off the bat i like the writing more and i just think abby jimenez is always a quick little rom-com girly like you're not gonna get that much from the books but romance but they're enjoyable and the writing is good so i may have caved i bought this on my way home just because i got a signed copy so i don't want to cancel that order but i do want to read the book and the signed copy is like really back ordered i couldn't find it on libby like i literally could not find it anywhere i know i'm really impatient but my friend told me that i'm gonna finish this in like a day so i was like i'm gonna need this like in my hand right away anyways i bought it from barnes and noble today it was 30 dollars because i will be buying when it comes out in paperback so and i'm just so excited about the next two books i posted on goodreads and i was saying that like I, i've been in like a slump i posted that i'm reading this book and everybody was like oh my god you're gonna love it like it's so good and i was like okay i'm ready i'm excited from what i've read i am liking it it's definitely like easier to get into and i'm really excited for funny story everyone's already reading it people are like already almost done i'm like guys it came out today for the rest of time like every single year when she writes a new book i'm gonna be there on release day buying the book she's just so good like i already know that this is gonna be great actually i don't already know that 
I was like, what if I don't like it? Oh my god, I'm scared. I think I'm gonna like it though. I'm just so excited that like after I finish this one, which I'm sure is gonna be really good, I have this one waiting for me and it's like two good books in a row. I feel like it's just what I need right now, you know? I'm already down bad because you can just tell a woman wrote this book. I mean, clearly. <laughs> Women write every book that I read. They started calling each other on the phone and he was like, tell me about your day. And she was like, oh, so I just worked from home. And he was like, no, tell me about your day from start to finish. <laughs> if you're a man and you're watching this video, well, like, first of all, what are you doing here? This is for the girls. Just kidding, you can do whatever you want. But if you're a man and you're watching this video, it is literally so easy. It's so simple. You just have to care about women, first of all. Pretty much that's it. Second of all, like you have to just ask us about our day. Like ask us stuff. Like do you want to know anything about us? Because I feel like I've been on so many dates where like I'm doing all the talking and like asking all the questions and it's like I'm literally a girl. Why am I doing all of this? Like you're literally a man. Anyways, she just told him, she was like, it's nice that someone's asking me questions because I always have to do all the work when I date men. I was like, real, real guys thank god i got funny story yesterday because i got an email from target my signed copy that i pre-ordered a month ago is coming in two weeks make it make sense it's a pre-order it's supposed to literally come the day the book comes out that's literally the whole point point. and i never pre-order stuff for that reason because like when a book comes out if i really care that bad to have it the day it comes out i'll just go to barnes and noble because every time i pre-order something it doesn't come forever and it's like what's the point of this like i'm just paying you ahead of time for your book but i'm gonna have to wait even longer if i just went to barnes and noble and picked it up myself it's the next day i literally have to go to class in like 20 minutes i've been reading all morning and i can't stop it's so good but they just got together so what's this What's this little chunk of 100 pages that I still have to read? What is that about? Because I know it's not going to be good. We have our first slay of the video. Thank God. I was getting nervous there for a second. Just finished this. I ended up giving it four stars. Let me tell you why. Really like Abby Jimenez's writing when it comes to like a quick rom-com. Like if you're ever in a slump, like you just need to pick one of these books up. You're going to finish it in like a day. She also always adds sort of like mental health aspect. If you read her books, you would know like there's sometimes like anxiety or like domestic violence. This one was more like parental neglect. I do think she writes mental health very very well like I think she is able to like dive into these characters heads I remember I read yours truly last year and I feel like the anxiety depiction was really well written and it just like perfectly explained what it's like to have like an anxious brain this book was a little bit more like the parental neglect side so it definitely had a lot of other stuff going on Emma's mom was like a big part of this book there was just a lot less romance because there was a lot more like other trauma stuff that had to be like explored in this book so that's why I didn't give it four stars because I think like the other aspects of the book that were really really well done obviously took up more space and then the romance was kind of put on the back burner. I did really like the romance. I liked the chemistry. The one thing I said that was kind of weird was like the premise of the book. Like if you were to read the back of the book, it would literally say like they both are cursed. They want to make a bet and all these things. But that's like barely a plot of the book. If you're reading it for that reason, it's not really that big of a plot. But once they do meet, it's totally like not about that anymore. I think so much more of it was focused on like Emma and her mom. And just like if you do have any of the issues that Abby Jimenez writes about, you could maybe enjoy reading her books because it kind of gives you like a new perspective i don't know but in terms of like the romance <laughs> I feel like her books are so hyper realistic like they mention like pop culture stuff like tiktok and whatever But it always is done well where you're not like overwhelmed I feel like she mentions things that like we as gen z like talk about in real life like all the time Like tinder and like going to target and like I don't know there were so many funny examples There was a quote i'm not gonna be able to find it, but I loved it. Oh, I got it Okay, I literally flipped right to it the best kind of love doesn't happen on moonlit walks and romantic vacations It happens in between the folds of everyday life. It's not grand gestures that show how you feel It's all the little secret things you do to make her life easier that you'll never tell her about and taking the end piece of the bread at breakfast so she can have the middle piece for her sandwich making sure her car always has gas so she never has to stop at the pump watching tv on a rainy sunday when you're doing laundry and turning her light off when she's fallen asleep reading then taking care of each other when you're sick this is the kind of love that forever is made of because if it's good when life is draining and mundane and hard think about how wonderful it will be when the love songs are playing and the moon is out what <laughs> I love that this book, if you read it, you'd know like this like small little like sprinkles of romance within like their mundane tasks. And I feel like that's what's really beautiful to me. I didn't like care so much about like them going on a date. I liked more like seeing just like a couple like, and not seeing cause I was reading it, but like seeing an, a couple like in action, like everyday life and like not having to have these like extravagant things. And it was so much of like what he couldn't give her but he still found a way to make things like so special for her. And like he is the definition of if he wanted to, he would. 
And something else I want to mention, if you are going to read this book, unfortunately, there's a little prerequisite. You have to read part of your world and yours truly before you read this. Basically, I read these all out of order by accident, so yours truly is the second one. It's probably the most popular one, but you have to read part of your world first because all of these are interconnected, which you probably don't realize until you're reading it and you're like, wait, why do these people keep getting mentioned? Part of your world is Alexis and Daniel and there's like an um, age gap, like he's the mayor of a small town and she's like a big city doctor. I actually haven't read this one yet. And then the second one yours truly two doctors the guy has anxiety the girl in yours truly is best friends with the girl in this book because they all work at the same hospital and then this one i can't tell you how but it's related to those two books and it's kind of like a plot twist or like a surprise and i know who alexis and daniel are i haven't read this book yet but i know who they are they kept getting mentioned in yours truly so i figured out who they were but this book is a big part of this book i'll make cameos in this book so you'll see them in this book it's kind of cool how they all like relate because it's not the way you would think i would say read them in order because I think I regret doing that. I read them out of order and I'm gonna read this one soon because I literally have FOMO. They were talking so much about all this stuff and I was like, who are you talking about? Like, I don't know these people. And I feel like I would have enjoyed it more if I read this one first. That's pretty much everything I had to say on Just for the Summer. I definitely would recommend it. I think it's a cute read. I really like her books. I just like the mental health aspect and I like how they're very sweet, but they're not like overly like book talk smutty. Like, you know, sometimes those are just not my taste anymore. I feel like they just don't have any depth. And like these all have depth, but they're still like lighthearted in a way. Like you're not gonna leave like crying depressed, but you're also gonna have like a little bit more of a deeper outlook. Now, what you've all been waiting for, the last book of the video. I saved the vest for last. It's actually Friday when I'm filming this, so I have been a few days late. Everyone already finished it. People are posting their opinions, and I'm getting a lot of mixed opinions. I'm trying to avoid, like, the opinions and the reviews and the spoilers because I want to form my own opinion. I don't think I'm going to hate it. I think I'm probably going to give it, like, a five star. I don't know what it's about. I'm going in blind. I don't really want to read the back. I just want to, like, go into it. I remember someone saying something about it being roommates. When I first read Emily Henry, I started with People We Meet on Vacation, and I didn't like that one. And then I went to Beach Read, and I loved Beach Read. Those were the only two out at the time. The next year when it came out, I read Book Lovers and I didn't like that one. So I low-key was like, okay, like, is she a one-hit wonder? Like, maybe Beach Read is the only good one. And then Happy Place came out and I really liked Happy Place. That became my five-star favorite. If you're having, like, a midlife crisis or you're in your 20s or you're graduating college, like, Happy Place is the book for you. I mean, not everyone loved it, but I personally thought it was, like, so good. I'm gonna start this this afternoon. Really nervous because what if I don't like it? We'll have to see. Okay, I just read 75 pages. Daphne was engaged to this guy Peter they were about to get married and he left her for his girl best friend the girl best friend's boyfriend that she left is Miles and Daphne and Miles were just like oh my god like this sucks we should just move in together because now I have to find a place to live they moved in together and they're roommates and then they got invited to the wedding so they sent in an RSVP as a couple and now they're like fake dating because they don't want to like admit that they're both single so they're gonna be a fake couple you guys know I love fake dating. I'm very excited. I just miss her books. Like, I love her writing. It just feels like a conversation. Like, I was reading it, and I was like, this just feels like I know exactly how they're saying these things. Like, I get what she's trying to convey here. Like, it feels like they're real. Like, I'm watching a TV show. Like, they're real people, and I'm, like, watching them interact. And her writing is just so, like, realistic. Stuff that people would actually say. Guys, he has tattoos, curly brown hair, a beard, and he's sarcastic. That's later. He's also really funny. Like I'm laughing out loud at some of these things. I'm laughing. It is getting a little bit like psychotic when I'm just like sitting here and I'm like, <laughs> and then I'm like, Oh, I feel like I've read about like half of the book. I like the book. It's engaging to me, but I low-key feel like I'm not like super connected to the characters. I like the couple, like I like Miles and Daphne, but I'm kind of like, I feel like Happy Place and Beach Read, I was much more invested, especially with the boys, like Gus, especially. Augustus Everett but Miles like I like him he's definitely my type like if I had a type it'd be probably him like tattoos in the beard but he's kind of described as like this like free floater like he has like a bunch of jobs like he smokes weed he's just like chill and then I found out he's 36 and I was like I think Emily Henry's probably in her 30s like I don't know how old she is but I'm sure she's not in her 20s but her books kind of feel like perfectly for people in their like mid-20s I'm myself I'm 21 so I'm not in my mid-20s yet but like I feel like I can relate to so much of the books and then always the characters end up being like 33 or like 35 and I'm like I don't know something about him being 36 really caught me off guard because of the way that he's described I was picturing like 28 36 36 is pushing 40 low-key 
not pushing 40 but like close to 40 and then like in my mind that's like old i know i like dilfs sometimes but like the way he's described i think that's what really gets me i think it's just me like i have a disconnect with reading about people who are like significantly younger or significantly older than me like 36 is 15 years older than i am that's a whole person i hate reading about high schoolers because that feels like ages ago for me so it's like i love reading books about people in their like 20s like maybe even like late 20s but anyways besides the age all of her books have a specific like topic they focus on which is why i loved happy place because it focused on being like out of college and having changes in your life and like being in your mid-20s like crisis era i was like that's me but this one's more about like finding yourself after a breakup and i just feel like that's not really my issue right now i don't really have any relation to that so it also has like subtle hints and subtle themes of like absent parents so i feel like that's also a theme that if you're like interested in that you could read this book i feel like i said all of her books have a specific theme so it's like sometimes you just don't like love the book maybe because it's not a theme that you relate to but some of the other books people don't relate to i love because i relate to those themes i also feel like i've seen a lot of negative reviews that's why i'm kind of getting a little bit in my head like one of my friends texted me and she was like this is my my least favorite emily henry book and i was like girl are you kidding like i don't think it's gonna be my least favorite but i don't think it's gonna be my favorite i'm not like obsessed with the book and i feel like definitely beach read and happy place i was obsessed by this point obviously it's just like when people get arcs and stuff they always post the videos and they're always like yeah it's my favorite emily henry book and then it completely skews your idea of it because i remember when people were getting happy place arcs they were saying it was her worst book and i was like oh i'm not gonna read that now and then i read it it was my favorite one so it's like it always just is depending on the person so some people think this is her best book i definitely don't think so even just 200 pages and i just think that's not possible i did finish i ended up giving it a 4.25 i don't know i kind of wasn't super impressed by this it did not surpass happy place or beach read for me i feel like nothing's gonna surpass those honestly overall i just feel like the plot was a little bit all over the place i also feel like the side characters were kind of like not adding that much i wasn't obsessed with it i feel like neither of the characters stood out to me a ton i like the story i like the roommate thing i like the little fake dating but it wasn't that big of a deal to like fake date you know emily henry books are never like super tropey they're always more like literary so i knew there wasn't gonna be that much of the fake dating but i do think that was kind of put on the back burner i did like the topics that were talked about are related to some of it too i also thought miles was very similar to gus from beach read and i feel like i didn't like that because i kind of wanted him to have his own personality something i don't like that emily henry always does in her books every emily henry book has like a third act breakup they'll get together they hook up like everything's looking great and especially because her men are always written so well where it's like you want to root for them but every single time she needs a third act breakup conflict she always just makes like the men become super distant and avoidant and i really don't like that because every single time it happened in beach read it happened in this book where they like hook up and then right afterwards everything's going so great and then all of a sudden the guy's like mia and he won't answer his phone and he's not answering calls and he's just like distant his responses are weird and i'm just like what is that i feel like it's just a plot device to get to the third act breakup but like i just don't like it because it's like ruining all the work we just did that's pretty much all i can say i honestly didn't have that many thoughts i didn't have like the best time reading it i feel like the middle got a little bit boring for me personally i think my overall ranking for her books which is going to be very surprising i think this is kind of unpopular but number one i think i'm officially claiming it i think it's happy place but i do have to reread that one because i haven't read it in a year so it might be different like i don't know i've only read it once but i remember it being so good and the number two i'm gonna put it beach read because i love that book i read it like five times or or more but i just like i think the more i reread it the more simple it becomes to me i'm kind of like you know what like i do love it but like i don't know if it's my favorite anymore and then number three i'm gonna put funny story because i did like the couple i like daphne and miles number four for me is people we meet on vacation and number five is book lovers again i haven't read the bottom two in a long time so i don't really like, remember them that well but but I remember book lovers being kind of boring in my opinion. That is officially it for this video. I'm so happy. This is one of my favorites I've ever done. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to do a quick recap in case you forgot. I'm also going to rank the books that I read so you get like a clearer idea of how I felt. Number four, in fourth place, the worst book that I read in this vlog was Bride by Allie Hazelwood. I gave it two stars not for me <laughs> number three which obviously you guys probably already guessed was butcher and blackbird i also gave this two stars not a favorite of mine i didn't think there was much going on in that book i thought it was just very smutty and very depthless number two second place is probably going to be abby jimenez just for the summer i did like this but it kind of did go a little all over the place with the plots so i feel like i have to give it four stars i did really like it though i don't know how it compares for me compared to her other books i have to sit on it and then number one is funny story by emily Henry, it got the highest rating in this video. I gave it 4.25 stars, but I did enjoy it for the most part. I thought it was pretty funny. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. Bye!